and I haven't made a video in a while, so I figured I'd make one. I actually have a bunch of stuff to upload. Just haven't had time. This is a, an MTD Yard Machines chipper shredder. I inherited it. It doesn't do much chipping or shredding. I didn't really try to shred anything, but I suspect the blades are just gummed up. There's probably all kind of weeds and crap wrapped around inside there. You really can't see. You can grab a flashlight. You can see a little bit in there. It was well used. You could buy new knives for it. Like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. I don't think it's necessary. I think get it cleaned out, sharpen them. They're pretty thick chunks of steel, so I mean, unless they were somehow split in half or were cracked real bad, they'd be unusable, but you'll see when we get into it. It's a uh, Zoom in MTD. The model number is 24A464G729. It runs like a beast. Uh, like I said it just it won't it won't carve anything up. So let's get into it. Let's get it apart. I've got a lot of projects here. I'd like to make videos on them, just because I like making videos. I still have that Jeep sitting out there and putting a wiring harness in it. I could never track the short down. I got tired of cutting into the wiring harness, but it's a story for another day. I've got this. I've got all the parts for it. I've had it for about a year. Just have to get it together. It runs great. Just. Need a typical bushings, ball joints, stuff like that, but enough of that. Uh, I've never taken one of these apart, certainly not this one. Not that I remember anyway. I've never taken this one apart for sure. Looks pretty straightforward to get the chute off of it. A couple bolts there. Get this out of there. And uh, well, see what happens. All right, I'm going to start with the shoot off here. I think all the bolts are standard. So that's what we're going to go with. No one uses wrenches anymore, me included, for the most part. Almost don't even use air tools anymore. Everything is 20 volt, the waltz. Until you really need power, and then I go back to the air. The nut, the bolt, the nut, the bolt, and these two just are bushings. And there's just a pin in here for this. I really don't know what purpose that serves, but it must be something you could take out easily to do some maintenance on it. an MTD but I'm sure other makes and models are identical it's got some kind of bar up here that's not coming out maybe that's just something you can lift up easily if there's something stuck in there but that's kind of feels like it's pressed in so I'm gonna leave it off of there anyway at least get my hand in there if we're gonna get to any bolts and uh, just for the sake of being safe and not being criticized, I guess I'll pull the spark plug. I gotta put plug in it and tune this thing up anyway. Might even take the carburetor apart and clean it. All right. Let me examine this thing a little bit. Might go tearing into it too much. All right. Well, that looks simple enough. Take those three 
bolts right in the center. Seems to be the only thing holding the shoe. Well, at least holding that that bracket there to the shoe. This thing folds up or down. thinking about it. Maybe I should pull the bottom ones out first. Quite a few of them. Gotta get this done before it ruins this table. <laughs> well, apparently those are holding the... There's a foot in the back there. I'm bolt it onto that. Back together ought to be interesting. I'm not going to tip upside down with the gas to run out of it. Not the most stable thing, but that's what I'm going with. That's all that is. jam nuts too. I can put this down. One more I'm gonna need an extension. This board's not gonna hold it up much longer once this thing's down. Could have prepared a little better. Look it over too much before I dug into it. See what's going on in there. Well, here's that. Now let's see what we got going on in here. Now see this doesn't have those uh this doesn't have the blades I looked up online. So I was wrong about that. I don't know what does there on the back side. So there's this right here. It's a little chewed up, but zoom in a little. It's kind of free. Got one blade here. Those other blades are back in here. And that's for the chipper side, and that's where I'm having the trouble. This is the shredder side. So, this all has to come off. This looks like Allen Key's holding this blade on. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I'll sharpen it anyway. Get this thing out of here. 
sell these parts too are readily available. I don't know how you could possibly wear one out. I don't, don't even really. This is what throws the crap out of it. This one's a little beat up for some. Oh, there's probably water laying in the bottom of it. I don't know why. It's never sat outside. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna get a different impact. Back side. Let's see if we can break that loose. Need a longer wrench. Now this is spinning, so there we go. Actually, wasn't too bad. Try to keep everything together here. Stuck on there now. It didn't strip it all, didn't turn in there. It's stuck and it stuck pretty good. It's coming out. I'm gonna walk it out a little. I don't have a manual for this thing or anything like that. Well, I have no torque specs. We'll use the old, uh, we'll just guess. Can't put this on backwards because see the one side of the blade here is beveled in for that. So a couple dings. It's not anything that can't be filed out of there. I have an old Craftsman electric stone wheel. I got that from my buddy. It was his father's. I've used it on the lawnmower blades and stuff. It actually works pretty well. Now, I don't know if I need a puller for this or it's just going to come off. Or, if it doesn't, you'd rather go through all that. There's only a couple bolts that hold. That's not just, I'm pretty sure you need a puller. I have a puller, but... If. So here's where the comes in from the other side, bolts in down here, just take those and get the shoot and then I can just take those blades off from the other side and I think that's what I'm going to do. These are studs in here so I don't have to really do anything else. There's the blade I'm talking about. And there is quite a, they're held on with the same fastener. They're not sharp at all. I mean, they're not, not as bad as I expected them to be, but they're not good either. Oh, same thing. The only problem is, to jam this with something this time. These seem to be a little bit tighter. Let me get a screwdriver. I don't, I don't want to 
jam it there now that I'm looking at it. Because I'll be leaning on the blade. I really don't know why this wasn't cut as well as it should, because these things don't seem that bad. Let me see if I can just hold it. Oh, they're tight. Break them loose with the impact before I go. Yeah, that'll work. You want to bet that I could probably just hold this this way. So there's the knife. It's got a part number on it. I mean, it's not like a razor, but I don't see why this thing wouldn't cut. This one actually is sharp. I mean, if I ran this thing, it definitely got super hot though, because there's a coating on here that's. I mean, it's just not sharp enough. I don't know. I'm not going to replace them. This is easy enough to take apart where I'm going to pretty them up and see what I could do from there. But I was expecting to see a lot more garbage under here. And really, just not there. All right, so I had to think about this for a minute. So this is the bolt that holds the blade on. Again, this is the same, pretty sure it's the same motor that's on my, uh, on my generator. I didn't do a video on that. I should have. That came off the same way. Uh, you just need a bigger bolt. I believe it's metric. Because I actually tried to thread a 3 16 or I'm sorry, a half inch, whatever it is, half 12, I, I'm not sure. But a standard thread in there, it wouldn't go. I even thought, oh, maybe it was stuck. I gave it a whack with my little impact and pulled some threads out. So there's no need for me to take this off. I can see behind it, it's clean. I remember my generator had a factory flaw. There were no threads in here. That's how you pull it. Now this is the bolt that holds the blade on. It goes in until it hits the threads on the crank. And then this is the puller threads. And if you had the right size, you could just put whatever you want. The tool is almost like uh, if you ever pulled the clutch off of an ATV, you got that long bolt that's got the kind of nipple on the end, whatever you want to call it. And then that would go inside and pull the uh, CVT off. This is the same thing, uh, but again, there's no reason to pull it off. So if you ever get into it, I remember now my generator, I had to put threads in it and I put three eighths or a half inch, whatever it was in there, and that pulled it. So. I could see behind this thing pretty clearly. Otherwise, I would have, I would even re-threaded it if I had to, because I don't have anything metric that'll go in there. But there's nothing all wrapped up back there. It's pretty clean. Ratchet's a little bit overkill for this particular operation, if you want to call it an operation. I'm going to take everything off of here though and clean it really good. I mean, none of that other stuff appears to be... I've seen the replacement parts for those things with the fingers on there and they're not... They're not sharp. They're not supposed to be sharp. 
biggest difference between this, I'm almost positive it's the same motor. I mean, this is all almost damn near identical. Uh, biggest difference is my generator has a governor where this has a throttle. So we're going to get this carburetor out. The carburetor is identical. I mean, they all kind of look the same anyway. I better get something. No doubt in my mind there's gas in this thing. It's going to run out. Yeah. I put stable in everything, ethanol treatment. I work on a lot of small motors, mostly for my friends or neighbors. And it's always the same thing, carburetors gummed up. They smell horrendous if they've been sitting for a while. You just take them apart, clean the jets out, clean everything out. I, that's, I don't even buy new gaskets most of the time, put it back together. But the, I put stable in all of my stuff. I put it right in my gas cans, my side-by-side -side or the quads or post hole digger, you name it, and I don't have any problems. Everything starts right up after it's been sitting. But we get something to put some uh, gasoline in that's gonna come out of here. clamp tool, which is completely unnecessary for this. But hell, I bought it. Might as well use it. Yeah. it is easier to use than pliers, I gotta be honest. Alright, so I forgot there's a shutoff. Put a bolt in there anyway. And the linkage. I should be able to tilt the carburetor once it's off. should swing out the hair. I won't have to take the gas tank off. And the biggest difference between this and my generator is my generator is governed when this has a throttle. So you take the nuts off, like I showed you, and then you need these uh, E-Torx or Torex. Tomato, tomato, who cares? And then these studs will come out. Carb off. I think I have some gasket material if I wanted to make new ones. Maybe I will. There's a tractor supply right down the road. I could order a filter anyway. I remember I couldn't get the filter at Home Depot or anywhere the last time. If I did, I don't remember, but I'm sure. Uh, Somewhere on the internet, it'll, it'll exist. These gaskets. Just for the air box. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, but I'm not overly concerned. So that's it. You pull these out. I'm just going to put these back on here. This should pull right off. Sure, it's stuck by the gas. Oh, it came off pretty easy. So you get a spring and the linkage. That's that. And I mean, really, if you don't want to, you don't even have to take this off. It, it, you can bolt it right back on, it'll seal. So, anyway, I'm going to get this apart, which I really think might not be necessary. I mean, this thing's clean on the outside, but the fuel bowl and the jet's what matters. You'll see on older Briggs and Stratton's. He was a Briggs and Stratton. This, this fuel bowl, is, this carb's newer. Uh, he gets two bolts to take the bowl off. Other ones, lawnmowers and stuff, older uh, craftsmen and that. There'll be a bolt here holding the bowl. That's actually the jet, so if you take it apart, make sure you clean that. Says Nikki on the side of it. It also has the Briggs and Stratton kind of logo there, so I know it's never been replaced. But and I, a lot of times you should shock these off if you have one of those. Uh, I have one. Uh, one of those impact screwdrivers, or you could just use your regular impact, but you got to lean on it good so you don't strip it. I think this is going to come apart pretty easy. These are a little bigger, but sometimes you get them they're small. Let's get this apart and see what it looks like inside. 
Alright, it's just what I'm talking about. It's an impact driver. This one's a Tecton. It works really well. The second first time. Once it's loose, don't beat on it any more than you have to. It's only cast light, really light aluminum. Once it starts to turn, just take them off by hand. Don't make the mistake I did. I had it right the first. I don't remember. I had my lefties loose. He's a righty tight. He's wrong. Make sure they fall on the floor just like that. This should have an O-ring in it. And it does. It's gummed up. Try to zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. See all that yellow on there? So I'll take it apart. And, uh, I'm not going to get a kit for it. You can see it's, it's gummed up. Good look here. I don't know if you can see. So I'm just going to spray it down, blow the jets out, make sure everything flows nice, clean the float off, clean the needle. Now I'm just going to stick it back together, put it back on. You can get new gaskets if you want. I've done plenty of them where I didn't buy new gaskets. Hey, unless you tear one, that's a different story. But well, just be careful. There's a lot of plastic crap in these things. Pop it up, hook it back and forth. I'm going to take it off slow though because pretty sure it'll only go in one way. There's a spring in the bottom for the for the float. I don't know if you can see that either. There's a lot of crap in this thing, so we're going to clean this up. Clean this up really good. Now, as far as this going back in, you have to uh, either take a picture of it. It'll only, on the bottom, there's like a little, you can see, it kind of looks like a little star there. And that correlates with these. That'll hold it straight. You know, at least the two of them where it needs to be. Uh, but I'm not going to mark it or anything. You could figure it out when you're putting it back on. All right, so I got it all apart. And... What I said previous was wrong. Unless I edit that part out, I said that this lines up with that hole there. I'm wrong. If you look, the fuel comes in here. Really simple to figure out how to put this back on or mark it. But you can see that's where the that's where the needle goes into the float seat right here. So obviously, it's like your toilet bowl works. When that picks up, the gas comes in and. So here's where your fuel comes in, that inlet right there. So you want to line that part up, this here, with this here. And then the middle's the middle. It won't sit on there really good unless, I mean, you put it in one of these openings. But remember that, with a little half moon, goes into there where the fuel pipe comes in. And uh, don't take the O-ring out if you're not going to replace it. Because it'll you'll stretch it, pulling it out, and it won't go back in the right way. Previously, I said it would go here or here. That other half won't. It doesn't go there. It doesn't go there. Those are just where the pins come through. So your choke butterfly, and of course your throttle body part of the carburetor. Now, looking at the looking at the needle, this one's good. If they're bad, first of all, the gas won't shut off. You'll just You'll be sucking gas in the motor almost to the point where you hydrolock it, trying to get this thing to focus. So you'll see a ring around the tip there before you get to the very tip where it's worn out. This one isn't. Doesn't even have a mark on it. So that's good. But again, you can see all the sediment in there. Sediment. 
I assume that's all from ethanol. Clean it out, blow everything out. And uh, same thing with this. I'm not going to order a kit for it, but there's no, I don't think there's any need to. I'm just going to clean it, put it back together. Should it leak after that, it's so easy to take it back apart again. Even the gaskets. I've done so many small motors with, I, I don't change the gaskets, just put them back on. Please take my advice. Don't mess with these throttle plate screws. Just leave them as is. You don't have to clean it to that point. Uh, I learned my lesson, believe it or not, on the exact same ATV carburetor I was just showing you. It's actually in the can here. It's been soaking in there for about a year. Uh, I took them off. It was on the 330 Magnum. I don't know if I ever did any videos on that. I do have a video I'm about to do, though. Putting a ready sleeve on the crank where I gouged it right where the seal is. But anyway, I took them out of that, and I ended up having to buy a used carburetor just for the throttle plate and the screws, which I didn't touch. Just had to take my good parts out of that one because they stripped. They never went back in right, and uh, just don't touch them. There's no need. No need whatsoever. Plus, they're an adjustment. They may not be on this. I'm pretty sure on the ATV there are where you could adjust the plate. It's, it's just not worth it. Just leave them alone. If your throttle shaft is worn out or anything like that, just buy a new cart. I mean, they sell these on Amazon. I can imagine it's probably not even worth me doing this. You can just buy another one for, I'd be willing to bet 15 bucks. Who knows? I don't use them. I'd rather just use this one, but. That one is a little, there's where the fuel comes in, Ooh. might have been a little blocked, so you just want to hit anything that looks like a jet, this is a small one, so it is coming out of where, I have to blow some air, that one's blocked, so this jet, goes through a circuit to this. I realize my hand was blocking it. So you got one here, one passage here, that comes out right there. I'm gonna blow some air to it. I can't get any cleaner to go through. Now another one right here that doesn't seem to be blocked. Let's just see. It may just be that nothing goes in. It could just be a hole that was there to um machine out another port. I can only imagine there's two jets. You're gonna have this one, which is probably like I guess a high speed jet. And then you have this one. I'm sorry, this one. Okay, little holes right here. That one comes out there, and then you get this one here. And nothing seems to be coming, it doesn't seem to come out anywhere. But they're the only two openings inside the carburetor that I see, other than this one. So I've got holes right there, and they seem to be pretty clear. And I got this right here. And I heard a pop there, so there might be check valve. Okay, that one comes out there. All right, so I guess when the choke's on, it pulls fuel from that one. And then I would assume the smaller holes are low speed and the bigger holes are high speed, or at least that's what I'm going to call them for now. So let's blow some air through there. We'll get them all cleaned out and... You'll know when they're cleaned out because the stuff will just flow right through. I'm going to blow these out. I'm going to keep them away from my, my new iPhone because I don't want to spray crap all over it. So. I don't know, maybe there's insurance on it. I don't want to do that. I almost lost all my parts. All right. Let's see if we can get the go through here now. Oh, 
that's coming out of there a lot better. A lot better. Well, see, some meal ring came up. Just that little bit that came up, and it's already, I can't get it back in there. I guess we can start blasting air through there. Can't expect much else, but that's all it took. Yeah, it's already all stretched out. Oh, you know what? The brake parts cleaner probably didn't. Might as well just pull it out now. And just count on buying another one. Should probably take this stuff outside and do this, but I'm just not gonna. Well, you get the idea blowing all this out. This might shrink up. I doubt it. When it dries out, brake parts cleaner did that. I didn't think of it. I don't remember having that trouble before, but I may have. I haven't really worked on anything like this in about a year. So, let me get this all cleaned up, see about the O-ring. Or the gasket, rather, if I have to get a new one, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I already started filing this, and I can feel it is. Put my nail to it. It is. It's rolled over, so just a little bit of filing. I got these. Just bought these files off the uh, auction site. Can't remember the brand of them. They're older, but I can't remember the name. But it's one of the better ones you hear about. Any new files you buy, I don't know. They seem to be junk. But you get these older ones and man they work. that sharpener. So you want to use this one I guess. Get the arm out of the way. So if you happen to use one of these I don't know if anybody does. Oh, I'll try to get the angle right. I'll take off as little material at a time as I can.
Claro. Brush to the steam. There's a lot of, a lot of metal in there. All right, I gave up on the wheel. That's good for fixing lawnmower blades, but it's just the round part just doesn't. It's not even. I I did this all with my file. At least I could lay it on there nice and flat. I mean that round stone, the wheel. Definitely fixed it up, but as far as getting a nice even, nice even finish across here, which is what I think you want, there's only one way to do it. That's with this file. Now it's got a nice straight edge on it, and it's pretty sharp. It's nice and smooth. I'm gonna work it down until it's all. It's all nice and even. I don't have any low spots, but it looks looks like it'll do the job now. take off any more material than that yeah I almost just cut myself there so yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna let this go I'm just gonna take the, get this little bit finer one and real nice and light be careful here because it's sharp way sharper than it was you can definitely hurt yourself on it nice really nice that smoothed it out really good too it was a little warped I think from it overheating I probably should replace them but we'll see how it does maybe next time I'm trying to do this without spending any money there it is looks pretty good it's really good all right next one Real quick, I remember on my generator, this plastic spacer, whether it's phenolic or plastic, whatever it is, this gasket was stuck in there pretty good. I just pulled it off. These are stuck and stuck good. When I tried taking the one off uh, the generator, I broke it. I ended up having to get one online. I think I got off of a, I used one off of eBay cheap. But uh, soak it down with, I use Berryman's carburetor and choke cleaner. If you keep soaking the gasket, it'll, it'll free it up. I just keep spraying it down. That's what I did with the one in the front that came off. But uh, you try prying it and try too hard, you'll definitely break it. It's all to the back of it's no different than the front. From what I remember, it's all hollow. So I'm ordering a carburetor kit. It's nine bucks. It's all the gaskets, everything I need. So that's what I'm gonna do and uh, get an air filter. So that's where I'm at. I'm sandblasting the the other parts just to clean them i'm not going to paint them or anything kind of pointless but the paint's not going to stay on them uh maybe i'll shoot it with some rusting caps later quick try to preserve it a little more but i don't think it's necessary that you're in there chipping the stuff up just going to wear the paint off anyway that's where i'm at 